Hey, remember when SpaceX declared that they would turn their Starship into the next NASA space station? Yeah, they are not kidding. NASA and SpaceX are now even working together to make this happen, and the interior design of this concept has recently been revealed. Wait, really? How could that happen? And what will this wild innovation be like? Let's explore. To build a successor to the dying International Space Station, six other companies in SpaceX collaborated with NASA through an unfunded Space Act agreement called the Collaborations for Commercial Space Capabilities II Initiative, CCSC2. In this agreement, SpaceX proposes using its own interplanetary spacecraft as a space station. On NASA's site, they wrote, SpaceX is collaborating with NASA on an integrated low-Earth orbit architecture to provide a growing portfolio of technology with near-term Dragon evolution and concurrent Starship development. This architecture includes Starship as a transportation and in-space low-Earth orbit destination element supported by Super Heavy, Dragon, and Starlink, as well as constituent capabilities including crew and cargo transportation, communications, and operational and ground support. The question now is, is Starship suitable as a space station? This was also the question posed to the SpaceX founder at the International Astronautical Congress in 2023, to which Elon replied, the volume of the Starship fairing is comparable to the volume of the International Space Station, about a thousand cubic meters of volume in the fairing. You could do what you are doing on the space station on a Starship if you want. There's no limit to how long it can stay up there. It really just, you need solar panels, battery, and thrusters to maintain orbit. Come to think of it, this makes a lot of sense. Starship is already the vehicle built for long-term space travel. It's already a mobile habitat. All we need to do is make it more comfortable and install the necessary facilities to turn it into a space station. Now there are two designs for the Starship space station layout. Vertical and horizontal division. In vertical layout, the ship will be divided into six distinct floors, each serving a vital purpose for long-term space missions. The first floor will house the warehouse, dedicated to storing food, equipment, and other essential supplies. This floor will also contain life support systems and power generators, ensuring the ship's functionality and crew safety. On the second floor, a plant growing facility will provide a sustainable source of fresh food. Long-term space travelers will quickly grow weary of vacuum-sealed meals, and fresh produce will help maintain vital nutrients that degrade over time. The third floor will feature a state-of-the-art gym, essential for maintaining the crew's physical health in low-gravity environments. Exercise is critical to prevent muscle atrophy and bone loss during extended space missions. The fourth floor will be designated for crew quarters offering private spaces where crew members can rest and recharge between their duties. On the fifth floor will be a laboratory where zero-gravity experiments will be performed. The sixth floor, being closest to the nose cone of the ship, will be limited in space. This floor will serve as a multifunctional area for meetings, or simply as an entry point to get into the station. These floors will be connected to each other via a central elevator. With horizontal arrangement, the number and layout of the areas will remain the same, the difference being that a single floor will be installed that runs throughout the station and eliminates the need for a central elevator. To further utilize the space of the Starship, after entering orbit, we can utilize the empty fuel tank to refurbish it into a living area or warehouse. Fortunately, since Starship is made primarily of steel, refurbishing the ship in space doesn't pose too many challenges. But that's not all that's exciting about the Starship Space Station. SpaceX and NASA plan to transform it into a Von Braun wheel, a rotating wheel space station. This is a hypothetical design for a space station shaped like a wheel that spins to create artificial gravity by utilizing centrifugal force, essentially simulating the feeling of gravity on the outer rim of the wheel. Even if the space station provides us with enough oxygen, food, and water to survive, our bodies still suffer the consequences of living for long periods in a zero-gravity environment. Humans are optimally adapted to Earth's surface conditions, and when exposed to weightlessness, 
various physiological systems undergo changes, with some even experiencing atrophy. While these effects are typically temporary, some can have lasting consequences on human health. Therefore, centrifugal gravity will be essential if we want to create an environment that supports long-term survival in space. To create such a space station, not just one, but dozens of starships would be connected together in space to form the outer ring of the Von Braun wheel. It sounds like a lot, but given the cost of a starship, such a massive space station would be even cheaper than our own International Space Station. Do you know what that means? This means that commercial travel to the International Space Station will be possible. Not only that, but the space will be so large, and the cost of each flight will be so cheap that even ordinary people like us will be able to hang out on SpaceX's space station one day. At the same time, centrifugal gravity will simultaneously protect these unsuspecting tourists from the perils of zero gravity and spare them the dreaded experience of microgravity toilets. While this is a great idea, SpaceX is currently facing its own challenges. Before they can build a space station out of Starship, they need to first focus on perfecting the vehicle. In the meantime, let's look at other rival space stations. Sierra Space recently made a major step forward in its space station development. In November 2024, Sierra Space proudly announced the successful completion of its sixth stress test and fourth ultimate burst pressure UBP test for the Life 10 commercial space station technology. This milestone marks the final UBP test required to meet factor of safety recommendations, paving the way for certifying the revolutionary, expandable life platform, large integrated, flexible environment for human habitation. The Life 10 in the latest test, conducted on October 29th at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, ruptured at a record-breaking pressure of 255 PSI, the highest recorded pressure in the three-year restraint layer certification campaign. This failure point exceeds all NASA guidelines for restraint layer capabilities across various applications and environments. As a standalone product, the Life 10 restraint layer demonstrated its ability to surpass NASA's four times factor of safety recommendation for both low Earth orbit and lunar environments. With an internal volume comparable to a 10-foot-long moving truck, Life 10 proves to be an ideal module for lunar surface missions. In a low Earth orbit environment, where the module's internal pressure is approximately 15.2 pounds per square inch, similar to Earth's atmosphere, the Life 10 boasts an outstanding factor of safety, greater than 16 times. In contrast, within the lunar environment, where operational requirements result in a reduced internal pressure of around 10.8 pounds per square inch, Life 10's restraint layer achieves a remarkable 23 times factor of safety. These impressive safety margins reinforce Sierra Space's leadership in commercial space station development as it successfully concludes the UBP phase of the Life 10 test campaign. Former Sierra Space CEO Tom Weiss said, our company is fully committed to developing the necessary technology to ensure there is no gap in LEO when the International Space Station is decommissioned. We are leading the industry in the development of revolutionary expandable structures that will bring to life the world's first end-to-end -end business and technology platform in low Earth orbit, enabling humanity to find the answers to some of the toughest problems faced on Earth. With this achievement, Sierra Space's commercial space station technology is advancing rapidly towards certification. Unfortunately, orbital reefs completion doesn't depend solely on developments from Sierra Space. The most recent progress Blue Origin achieved on this space station was announced by NASA a year ago when they completed four milestones set by the government agency. There hasn't been much else from Blue since then. Will orbital reef be completed before 2030? This is something we will have to wait and see. Another rival of SpaceX's space station, Axiom Space, recently released a new plan that it believes will speed up the completion of its space station. The company revealed an updated timeline for deploying modules to construct its Axiom station by the end of the decade. The first step will involve installing a payload power thermal module, PPTM, on the ISS. 
Axiom initially planned to install a habitat module on the ISS in late 2026, followed by a second habitat module and a research module. Finally, a power and thermal module with plans for those modules to eventually undock and become a free-flying station. However, Axiom executives noted that these modules were slated for the Node 2 forward docking port, which will later be used by the U.S. deorbit vehicle, USDV, for the station's final deorbit maneuvers. So the company has revised the assembly sequence, starting with the PPTM, which includes power, thermal systems, and eight science racks. Instead of docking the PPTM to Node 2 forward, it will now berth at one of two ports currently used by cargo spacecraft, like Cygnus. Axiom would then launch the first habitat module, HAB-1. Instead of docking it to the ISS as initially planned, the company would have the PPTM detach from the ISS and dock with the new habitat module. This would create a free-flying station with just two modules, capable of supporting a crew of four. According to Axiom, this milestone could be achieved as early as 2028, ahead of the previously projected timeline. George Motter, chief engineer and architect of Axiom Station, said, The huge advantage here to both NASA and Axiom is the fact that they do not have to reconfigure the forward port. They can bring the deorbit vehicle at any time. They can prepare for deorbit on their schedule. And once we arrive, we can stay there for a short time or a long time. We're not in the way. Once the station is free-flying, Axiom plans to add an airlock module, a second habitat module, and a research module. Each module is designed with its own unique power and thermal capabilities. Additionally, the first habitat module is equipped with a robotic arm, enabling it to reconfigure the station as needed. Mark Greeley, Chief Operating Officer of Axiom Space and Program Manager for Axiom Station, said the revision does not affect the overall cost of Axiom Station, which the company has yet to disclose. It does favorably impact our cash flow needs. It really is just a matter of phasing our cash flow needs to accommodate the new sequence. At this point, there's no certainty that a replacement space station will be ready by the time the ISS is retired. This isn't entirely surprising considering that it took over $150 billion and more than 22 years to construct the International Space Station. Also, the CLD program was specifically designed to encourage the development of new space stations while minimizing NASA's financial burden. With limited funds available and a tight timeline, all we can do is hope that technological advancements will make possible what once seemed unimaginable just two decades ago. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.